Okay, praise the Lord. Praise um, the Lord. We're going to be talking for a moment from the book of Ephesians, the third chapter. And uh, instead of going right to the 20th verse that everyone talks about, we're going to go from the 17th on in. Most heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray for the listeners. We pray for all of us right here, families, friends, and amen, associates, even our enemies. From the president's house to our house, to his house, her house, their house, our house, every home, God, we pray that you move by your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing. We need you like we never needed you before. God, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the blood that's running warm in our veins and for the activity of our limbs from the top of our head to the very soles of our feet. We thank you for everything that we have from our food, the clothes, materialism, and any other amenities that we have. Thank you, God. For you didn't have to do anything from our father's loins into our mother's womb, being born into the satanic world. Thank you for your mercy. And God, before we leave out, we ask that you save us. In Jesus' name, we pray for him, them, and all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. From the book of Ephesians, the third chapter, uh, give me the 17th verse again, brother, please. It says, um, right, Ephesians 3, 17. Mm-hmm. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. All right, so that Christ may dwell in your heart with faith. That means belief. Faith is the belief that God gives you. You can't believe in God whom you never saw or experienced until God, amen, somehow puts that faith, which is belief, in your heart. And you want to, and that's in your mind. I'm not talking about in your chest, as I always teach my people. I say, if you say you believe in a person in your heart, I no wonder some of this heart love that we have is no good and, and it's gone because you got to get it up in here. Get it up in here. This is what the Lord is talking about. Now, that's what I believe. And if you can find me wrong, then let me know. But I've been searched it out. I've argued about it. And I still come up with the same thing. If you go to the hospital and you find a person unconscious, their heart is beating. But if their conscience is not there, then you're just wasting time. Praise the Lord. The same thing. If I'm talking to you or you're talking to me and we're not getting it through our head, you're not talking to this. You're talking to this. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Go ahead, brother. And I pray that you be I, in the rooted in the Hold it. He said, I pray that you, I, in other words, I talk to God that you be established in God, right? Rooted in God. Established in God and in the love of God, right? Go ahead. Being rooted and established in love. They have power together with all the saints. It said that we have power together with all the saints, right? Yeah. Go ahead. To grasp how wide and long and high deep is the love of Christ. All right. May we be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, mm -hmm. the length, mm -hmm. the depth, mm -hmm. and the height, the, te the depth. In other words, the whole measurement of God. Understand God from every aspect. So there's a lot of God to learn. Amen? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 19. And to know his, that, he said, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Mm hmm that and, you, Go ahead. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. All right. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. Hold it. Listen to that. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. So the knowledge of grammar school, high school, college, this is a is this is an understanding past that. Huh? Do you see what that says? And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. So you can't just learn it in the college or grammar school or, or through the work. You understand what I'm saying? God has to reveal these things to you. You feel what I'm saying? Touch you. Mm -hmm. Huh? And then he said to know the love of Christ. So another word for the love of Christ, the I love you. What's another word that you can use? Someone, can anyone think of a word? What's another word that you can use when you say, I love you? The love of Christ, I love you. What's another word? Adore Christ. I, okay. Adore, which is still a love. I love you. Give me something else. Instead of I love you, I desire you. Uh -huh. I want you. I need you. I need you. I want to be with you. Huh? I'm drawn to you. So the love of Christ draws. It wants. 
There's a need that's there. And it's all godly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The love of Christ. For God, what? So oh, loved the world, the world that he gave yeah. his only begotten mm -hmm. son that whosoever believeth on him, mm -hmm. Jesus, should not perish but have everlasting life. So believing mm -hmm. is just not a feeling. Mm -hmm. There's an operation in the belief. Huh? All right. Uh, verse 20, brother. 20. Now to him who is able. Now unto him that is able. Mm -hmm. To do what, immeasurably? Yeah, to do immeasurably or exceedingly. More than all we ask or imagine. Hold it. Stop right there. Now unto him, Christ, mm -hmm. who what? He's able. Mm -hmm. Able to what? Able means has the ability, has the operating significance and power, right? Mm -hmm. What is he able? He's able to do. In other words, he's not disabled. You walking with mm -hmm. me? But he's able. That's good, brother. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He's able. Mm -hmm. Can somebody say he's able? He's able. But what is he able to do? Paul is saying here in Ephesians, now unto Christ, or to God, because if the two of them are one, right, and you can't have God if you don't have Christ, then if you have Christ, you automatically have God, right? Mm -hmm. So now unto him, mm -hmm. that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Wow, that's a heavy statement mm -hmm. right there. Uh -huh. He's able. Mm -hmm. He's able to do what you can't do. Huh? He's able to do what I can't do. Huh? He's able to do what the president can't do. Mm -hmm. He's able to do what the Democrats and the Republicans can't do. Huh? Now unto him. Huh? Uh, if I'm going to vote for someone right now, I'm voting for Jesus. Can I get away? Yeah. Because now, unto him. He's able to do not just exceedingly, but abundantly. Mm -hmm. Exceedingly means going beyond yeah. the point. Mm -hmm. huh? Not does he only get to the finish line, mm -hmm. but he goes beyond the finish yeah. line. Huh? And not only does he give, but he gives a Abundantly, that means a lot. Huh? Uh -huh. And he, he does it more than what you can ask or I can ask mm -hmm. or think. In other words, you and I have really not reached the ideology or the plateau of knowing what God can do. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the scripture, what you understand is that he is able. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and he's able to do everything. Right. And then the scripture says, according to the power that worketh in us. Uh -huh. So if he's able to do abundantly, exceedingly, more than I can ask, mm -hmm. more than you can ask. But listen to what it says, according to the power that works in us. Hmm. So that means that we have to submit to the power. Mm -hmm. That means that we have to become one with the power. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When you on and when you're in a vehicle with someone, the power of the vehicle operates with you in it. So whatever the vehicle does, you are part of it. Is that right? Uh, anytime you're part of a family or a gathering, when you're there, whatever's going on, you're a part of it, right? So you got to be in it to win it. Can I get a witness? Uh, so what is telling you if the power is in you, mm, mm -hmm. he's going to work in you. Uh, yeah. He's able to do. But he won't do if you're not in him. Can I get a witness? Now unto him. Mm -hmm. That's able to do exceedingly, mm -hmm. abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Mm -hmm. According to the power that works in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. So Paul is saying that if you need something, God has it. 
<laughs> and all you have to do is come to Christ. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at the April. He says, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you want to be rich, it's not rich in the world, but it's rich in Christ. Can I get away this? He's able. Yeah. Uh, I just want to tell you that no yes. matter what they think about you, you want to try to get closer to Christ. Huh? Because if he's able, he's able without fail. Yeah. See, the presidents yeah. fail, the senators fail, the governors fail, uh, uh, the lawyers fail, the, the Democrats fail, the, the, uh, the, 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 the Republicans fail, the fascists fail, the capitalists fail, the government fails, you fail, I fail, but there's no failure in Christ. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Uh, now, I don't know if you believe that. Uh, I don't know if it's a fairy tale to you. But I heard my father say the other day when I was talking to him, and sometimes it seemed like he's the preacher, and he said, God is not a myth. Mm -hmm. And I kept that in my mind. And I said, God is not a myth. And I looked up the word myth means God is just not a folk tale. Uh -huh. God is just not an old story. God is just not a lie. God is just not something that someone made up, but God is real. God is not a myth. Can I get a witness? God is not something that's just an imagination. God is power. God is. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He may be more than we understand him to be, but one thing that we must understand, that without God, there is nothing. May I, maybe I can't scientifically, philosophically, psychologically come to you and present it the way you like it. But I'm just going to tell you that I found that God is real. You can believe it if you want to, but he's come to me, and I hope he's come to you to let you know that he's real. Hallelujah. I don't know about Sigmund Freud. I don't know what about Augusta Comte. I don't know about Charles Darwin, Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, but they died and gone on. I don't know about the presidents. They fail, they come and go. But I heard about Jesus. And somehow it got in my feet and made me feel a little bit better. Somehow it got in my heart, my heart that ticks blood, and also in my mind. It made my mind feel a little bit better. I was down, but when I heard about Jesus, it somehow picked me up, turned me around. When they talked about me, Lord God Almighty, something about Jesus made me feel a little bit better. Something about Jesus, knowing that he's able, it made me feel as a little bit lighter. Something about Jesus. When I was sick, it made me well. Something about Jesus. I called the name Jesus for myself. He picked me up. He turned me around. Lord God, he made me feel all right. Can I get a witness? Better than alcohol. Better than drugs. Have you tried Jesus? If you're in depression, I felt depression, but what brings me out of depression is Jesus. He will, he'll pick you up. Jesus, he will, he'll turn you around. Call him, call him. Jesus, Jesus, I gotta call him. Ah, oh, Lord, they may not say that I'm a good preacher, but I try. They may not say that I was a good man, but I tried. You might be listening to me and say you don't like me, but I tried. But Jesus, he is the way.